Welcome back to the show. Let's go to line number six. Say good morning to the Mayor of Cape St. George. That's Stella Cornick. And good morning, Mayor Cornick. You're on the air. Good morning, Patty. How are you today? I'm not doing too bad. How about you? We're not doing too bad. Things are moving along. Slowly, I guess, but surely. <laughs> well, I mean, I saw the visuals over the weekend of the culverts being washed away, water rushing through people's homes. So give us an update first on the roadways. What's open, what's not? Well, the Marches Point uh, washout was repaired. Uh, we had a company land here Saturday morning. I think it was Boyd and Bungie landed here from Stephenville. And they did, like, I, I'm amazed at the job they did. Like, bing, bang, bang, it was done. Uh, about quarter after four, Bungie had the road open for us. And then uh, Monday morning, they started to move in equipment. We had a company, Johnson's from Cornerbrook. Uh, they moved in, and now they're in the process of getting Roses Brook open. They are telling me yesterday they're hoping to have it open on Sunday. Now, if they run into any issues, they will at least try to get one lane open for the schools on Monday. Uh, that's a good thing. And, you know, when people get at it, they can reopen these roads quite quickly. So was it merely clearing the roads off, or what's the status of washouts or the shoulders being eroded? Oh, my God. The shoulders on real. In actual fact, I'm in the process now, I'm, I'm just before you called, I'm sitting down doing an email to the Department of Transportation with pictures. One of our guys here uh, at the Cape went around and did pictures of all the culverts and the, uh, the uh, damages that the Department of Highways now has to come out to repair. So I'm sending them off the pictures. Hopefully, they'll get at this very shortly. One of the most devastating things, because we can deal with the issues of the shoulders of the road and the pavement and clearing up the muck and the grout and replacing yes. the culverts, it's the impact on the individuals. Not, and I right. just don't mean the ability to travel around the community or the area. It's the numbers of people that didn't have any home insurance in place, and now what? So the province and yourself have said, you know, send us some pictures. Any status about how some people are going to be supported here? Because I'm going to surmise that if they were struggling to pay the bills and couldn't afford home insurance, they're not going to be able to afford the repairs or to replace what's been damaged. Exactly. And this is what I've been fighting with, with the government. I'm on the phone. It's a couple of days. I got to say, I got to I gotta send a shout out to our MEJ, Tony Wakeham. He's been excellent. He's been on the phone with me every day trying to get satisfaction, push the government to try and get something done. If he hasn't been around, his assistant Kip was out here and we both myself and the maintenance, we took Kip around, he took pictures, so he is, he is active trying to help us. Um, right now, I'm, I am disappointed because I was speaking to a government official yesterday, and the way it works is they have this um, emergency funding for things like this, okay? So this emergency funding takes over, like, all the flood damage in Newfoundland. Now, it has to reach a certain threshold. Now, I'm uncertain, but I think the threshold is $2 million before that money is accessible to the people, okay? Is that so provincial they, money or from the National Disaster Fund? Provin well, they, I'm talking about provincial people, okay. emergency services. Yeah. And they tell me now that uh, they have to do what's called, uh, even if the money becomes available, before it becomes available, they have to do an assessment process. Uh, it's got to be a significant event, which this was, right? Then they've got to determine the scope of the damage. How long is this going to take? You know, we need it now. We don't need it three months down the road. Well, you know, we, we had a family displaced. Now, this family is out there. They have to find a place to live. They, they have to find another place. They have to find the money for rent and security and all this. Why? Where's our government? Why aren't they stepping in to help? I, I can't answer that, but if we're talking about timeline for turnaround, for assessments yeah. to be done and what have you, and inspections, yeah. I mean, if we just look at the example of the aftermath of Fiona, unfortunately, it can take a long time. <laughs> There's people out in Port Bass still haven't been paid as far as, as far as I'm being told. Yeah, that's what I'm told as well. So we have people, okay, now, you know, the, the, my main concern, okay, is the, the ones that got displaced first. Then we have the ones, their basements flooded, and they lost, say, a lot of, uh, I have a family that lost a fridge, stove, washer, dryer. That's main necessities in life. What are they going to do? They don't have the money to buy it. 
It's a real shame that people are in a position where they're not able to afford, or they simply don't buy home insurance because I guess the adage of, you know, it costs a certain amount up front to pay those monthly premiums, but you compare that to the aftermath if you lose your home through a fire or a flood or whatever, it's a huge problem. Any idea how many families or how many homes were without insurance? I, I can't tell you that number, but I do know I have two uh, two people that sent me pictures. They went after their insurance. They cannot get insurance, even though they have it, because it's considered ground flooding. If it had come in through their windows and their doors, they would have covered them. But because it came from natural disaster, they are not covered. Yes, and then, of course, they'll also tell you when it came to Fiona and the sea surge that that wasn't covered either. I mean, this, to me, it's ridiculous. Yeah, some of it is. I find it is. <clears throat> I appreciate the update. Anything else this morning? No, I'm just, you know, I'm just praying that our government sees the light. I think they forget that we put them in. You know, we put them in power, and we could take them out if they don't step up to the plate. Well, keep us in the loop as to how much attention you get and how quickly the the turnaround becomes, if quick is the proper word, which is probably not. (laughs) All right, Patty. Thanks a lot for having me on. I appreciate your time. Good luck. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. This is Stella Cornick, the mayor of Cape St. George.